How's it going? Welcome back to building a deep learning framework from scratch. Today we're going to go over the models portion of the entire framework. So the basic idea here is that you're going to want to run different types of models and models and be able to plug and play them within the training workflow. So what you need to do is you need to define these models and build these models in some kind of script off on their own and then we'll be able to import them in later during training and then also prediction. So just to kind of demonstrate how you might go about doing that today, I'm gonna to build three different models using one of them. I'm gonna be using the sequential class um, built in the Keras, and then I'm going to be using the fun functional API, and then I'm going to subclass a model. Just to kind of show you some basics on how to go about using TensorFlow and Keras. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and get started. So open up your code editor. We're gonna go ahead and import some libraries. And then I am going to go ahead and import the layers I'm going to be using today. Okay, and then so the first model I'm going to build is built using the sequential class. So I'm going to define a function um, and I'm going to build, go ahead and build a densely connected neural network. So a very simple toy example um, of how you might go about doing this. There we go, we created a sequential model. And now we're just gonna add some layers to it. Okay, so what this is basically saying is I wanna add a densely connected hidden layer to the model. I want to have activation ReLU, and then I want 128 neurons. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Um, currently, in this particular example, we're kind of hand coding these things. Um, one, the number of hidden layers, and two, the number of neurons per hidden layer. Um, when you actually start running experiments and start doing hyperparameter tuning, right? So you've 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 built up your entire workflow, your data pipeline, you're training your models, you get your you get your loss and your metric figured out, and you have your test set and your um, validation set. What you do is you kind of hyperparameter tune. So um, you make adjustments to different things like your loss function, your batch size, your learning rate, the number of hidden layers in your model, you know, the number of neurons. You you start to uh, manipulate these things and um, figure out which ones provide a better validation score and then in the end the better better test score right so um, hand coding and hard coding these things in at the moment for this particular problem is okay but when you start wanting to iterate and do things um, you're going to want to have these functions defined a little more in a more general sense so that you can easily manipulate um, lots of your code without having to change um, with only like changing a few inputs right so um, for the since we're only modularizing things now, we're hard coding them in for this specific problem. But then in a few videos, when we go to generalize things, you'll see how we can take the same idea, but then make it so it's easier to implement across different iterations. So now I'm going to add um, a final layer. So we need dense one. So this is going to be and then it has a linear activation. So since it has linear activation, then it'll just output exactly what the value is. Um, ReLU or rectified linear unit, if the value is below zero, it gives it a zero, and then anything else after that, it'll return its value. So different activation functions. Since this is your output, you want it to be linear, and then we'll return our DNN. So there we go. We've created a sequential model using TensorFlow and Keras. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to use build up a model using the functional API. So I'm going to go ahead and define a CNN. So we're going to create a convolutional neural network this time. Um, go ahead and pass a few parameters. And then we'll go ahead and 
define Actually, this is the wrong thing. I'm going to go ahead and change that real quick. So that's actually for the conv block. What we want to do for the CNN is Okay, so to define our convolutional neural network, all we're doing is taking in an input. So again, we hard-coded the shape of our chip, which we'll generalize later, but we have a 128 by 128 by three channel pixel um, sized image chip. We're gonna pass that through our convolutional block. So we're gonna go ahead and pass that through our convolutional block. The first one is gonna be passed on the inputs. The second one, we're just gonna pass the same output from the first conv block. But then we're going to increase the number of filters. So then we're gonna keep doing this, right? And then as we go deeper into the convolutional neural network, we're going to increase the number of filters, which means the depth of the, the feature space, because as it goes deeper in the convolutional neural network, it also has been pooled spatially. So it becomes spatially smaller, but then the depth of it becomes, becomes deeper, right? So, that's kind of what we're doing here. So then we keep passing what comes out of the uh, convolutional block into the next, into the next, into the next. And then finally, we pass it through the global max pooling. What this does is it takes all of the information and it pulls it out into one tensor. You can also use flatten. Um, that'll flatten it into one tensor. And then we pass it into a densely connected layer, which then goes to the number of outputs, right? So if this would be a six class classification problem, and then since it's a multi-class problem, um, we're going to pass the softmax activation. And then at the end, we'll go ahead and return the model. So now to kind of, now to define the convolutional block so that you can see how that works. So there we go, we have a couple of parameters. We have inputs, number of filters, if we wanna apply batch norm or not, and then how much dropout, if we would like to apply dropout to that particular block. Okay, so what this first line is doing is it's calling the conv2d layer. Um, we're passing in the number of input number of filters that we like we have a, a three by three strided kernel and then we want to do padding the same so then that means the the size of the input is going to remain the same once it comes out of the convolutional block because generally if you don't put padding the same if you say valid which is the other option then it'll actually pull it and it'll become smaller just because that's how um, the convolutional operation works so now we have that so if batch norm then we want to pass our output from our conv layer into the batch normalization layer 
If not, we don't want to apply it, so then it'll skip it. And then we are going to apply our activation function. Um, for this particular problem, I'm just using leaky relu. You can use um, any activation function you see fit. And then if dropout is greater than zero, we want to apply the dropout. And then finally, so when I talked about how it's pooled spatially, that's what max pooling does. So it pools it by two. And then we'll go ahead and return it. So as you can see, this is kind of a basic convolutional block. Um, you'll pass it through a convolutional layer and then you'll do some sort of pooling. Um, whether using max pooling or you could actually use strided pooling, um, which we might get into in some other um, future problem. So now you've kind of seen how you can build up a sequential model and then also building up a functional model. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build the same convolutional neural network, but I'm going to um, inherit from the Keras model class. So that's actually called subclassing. And um, this allows you to do get a little more in the details and manipulate a lot more um, features and how the model behaves. Um, it's something that I don't do very often, but when you when you have certain use cases, like you need to um, manipulate how the model trains and define your own custom training steps or custom um, metric updates and such, stuff like that, you're gonna wanna be able to subclass the model. So go ahead and walk through that. And then, so basically what we do is we initialize, um, just just for case of um, demonstration, I just initialized a couple of the layers that we had done previously um, with the this particular model. And then what I'm going to do is define this function and make it a, a class instance function. And then I'm going to define call so whenever we create an instance of this model and then once we call it on some inputs this is the, these are the operations that are going to take place so we're actually going to mimic what happened in the original model very closely i'm just going to go ahead and copy paste because it's very similar the only difference is we're going to be calling self.convolutional block and then um Again, passing through deeper features, um, deeper filter spaces. Then we're gonna do some global pooling and then we're going to classify so we can get our um, softmax probabilities out of the model. And then last but not least, we're going to define our um, sub training function. So the function we call in our training workflow that we're gonna get to in the next video that grabs our model, compiles it and returns it to us for training. So. So we're going to go ahead and define that. So the things you're going to need when you're training a model 
and when you call fit on it, or as you're going to know, it need what type of optimization algorithm you want to use, which is called the optimizer. So there's a few. There's Adagrad, RMS Prop, um, Atom, and then also just normal stochastic gradient descent. Um, and then you're also going to need your loss, right? So your loss is specific to your task. Regression problems are going to use things like mean squared error, mean absolute error, um, categorical or more classification types problems are going to be using things like um, um, cross entropy or categorical cross entropy and then like semantic segmentation tasks are going to be using like IOU um, type style losses you have like your jacquard loss your dice loss your um, things of that nature and then you're and then you're also going to need your metrics so what are we scoring right so your loss is what your model is trying to optimize and your metric just tells you like hey how well am i doing in this task it's it's your your view into you know is the model doing achieving the goal that i want it to right so um you know you're going to have different things like um iou score for segmentation tasks and then for um regression tasks a lot of times i'll use like um, mean absolute error and then classification tasks, you'll use accuracy or something of that nature. So, okay, we're gonna go ahead and define this function. So I like to print my model summary just to make sure I'm compiling the correct model and I can um, verify that in my training workflow. And then I like to give myself some print statements to let me know where I'm at in the workflow. And then here we are going to compile the model. And there you have it. So it's pretty simple. Now we have kind of at least a basic understanding of how to and where we can define our models. And then in the next video, we're gonna walk through how we can then import those into our training workflow. And then we're gonna actually build up the actual training code to start running and um, working on different types of experiments. So I hope you got something meaningful out of it. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.